that war continues in heaven. And if war continues in heaven, then it can't be the end of a period. An end of a period means an end of a war. What brings an end to a war? A treaty brings an end to a war. Now, the present world and the present elite depend upon the war continuing in heaven to justify the way they operate. They need the war. And the existing elite who destroyed their own covenant needs people to believe that quote-unquote evil spirits are still in dishonour with the divine in order to maintain the lie that these people still believe or follow their covenant to Satan, the Talmud. They don't. I just said, they're in dishonour. They smashed it. So when a treaty of Lucifer is presented as part of a covenant, which it is, and cannot be unbound, cannot be denied, then you have exposed these people for what they are, severely mentally ill, cowards, destroyers, expose them for what they are and they cannot use a single trinket to claim that they are sorcerers anymore or in charge of the supernatural or worship darkness. And anyone that follows them hopefully now can see that they are nothing more than a bunch of liars, pirates, parasites, severely mentally ill, mad people. That's what we're dealing with, mad people. So that is a strategy of war as much as a healing process. And I hope people would understand the logic of that. It is a brilliant move. And, and it is a move of divine brilliance and divine compassion. Now, let's move to the saints and the Roman cult. They need division. They need division to hide behind it. They need division to justify their position. When division no longer exists, when you honour those that have been part of their system, when you honour them and forgive them, then you expose them for what they are. But if you condemn their past, if you hate the past, if you use all the rhetoric that uh, there should be some place in hell of eternal brimstone, then you're being suckered into the system that these people want. Now, you want to get rid of, of, of the madness that turns this paradise into hell. You've got to get rid of the mental illness that knows no bounds. The mental illness that's in the truth movement where people don't want you to be competent. The mental illness where a preacher says, uh, I love, but then molests children. Um, priests that molest children. The mental illness that has a group in Venice and around the world that claim themselves to be gods, uh, claim that they follow the Talmud, that don't. You, we, we have to get rid of the madness. And the only way to get rid of the madness is to remove the veils, remove the layers of lies that they hide behind. Now, that's exactly what this is. And if it's hard to understand, I understand it's hard to understand. If it goes against your, the way you were brought up, I understand it goes against the way you're brought up. But, but revelation is supposed to be about understanding something or realizing something far beyond what you thought it was. And if it is the end of the world, then we were promised thousands of years ago that our minds would be expanded beyond our comprehension when we realized the miracles before us. And this is a miracle. The Treaty of Lucifer is a miracle because the war is ended. The war is ended. So, yeah. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Isaac, are you there still? Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah, great. Isaac. How you been? Good. <laughs> well, you, uh, Frank, thanks for taking my call. Um, this is actually the first time I've listened or really even perused the, uh, the website or anything like that. And, um, I'm sure that I have taken ownership of certain things that cause me to really question and wonder about um, a lot of things that are on there. I think that you did answer some of the things in regard to Article 47, which was one of my questions, and then uh, Article 23, 
I guess the main thing I want to know is how do you how do you know that? I mean, where who wrote all this stuff and where did this information come from? And who's responsible for putting it to text in this manner? And, I, and who are you? Well, okay, I, some good questions there. Firstly, I'm a man. I'm not a messiah. I don't claim to be a messiah. Uh, I don't have a, a group of people around me. I'm not creating a cult. And by December the 21st, 2011, uh, being the day of judgment, um, I no longer have anything to part to do with this. Uh, how do I know this? Uh, thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, people who we do believe were inspired by God and, and there is no doubt in the general majority of people who were inspired by God uh, wrote certain things. They wrote certain things so that at a certain time we would understand that uh, these are the ways we validate rather than having to um, you know, be, have doubt. Uh, one of those times is uh, the book of Daniel and the 1260 days or the 1260 years as reinforced in Revelation uh, and many prophecies. Uh, when you look through, you find that dozens and dozens of prophecies from all religions are coming to this point. So mm -hmm. I refer to that as a guide for anyone to understand. Did you think the four horsemen was just a symbol? Is it not uh, the perfection of divine natural procedure to end an injustice, an injury? How many... You know, think of what each of those four horsemen do in Revelation and tell me if it is not perfect notorial procedure. Think of 1260 years and the, fa and the first time that the Pippins put themselves in power in Rome in the year 751. Add 1260 to 751 and truly that is the date. What the Roman cults say and what is true are two entirely different things. But the Roman cult came to power in seven, well, sorry, in 1057, but the first time the Catholic Church came to power in Rome was 751. Add that together, what's the year of judgment? What's the year that they end? 2011. So there are all those signs there for you to decide whether you are able to recognize revelation, recognize prophecy, and that validates. So then it's not a question then necessarily of how this is true or why this has come because it's come because this is the time it's come. The question is, who is Frank and how does he know and, and, and how does this operate? So I'm, I'm trying to separate validation of which there is plenty out there from who I am. So have I answered that first part for you? Yeah, I would say so. I think so. Okay. I'm sure that right. we can dive deeper into that. But, you know, that's well, you know, but I'll let you do that. I mean, go and see well, how that compares to prophecy. But <laughs> let me answer the next part for you. Yeah, go right ahead. Please. Franco, Franco Collins is a man. Franco Collins has put his will up there. By December 21st, 2011, the year of the day of judgment, Franco Collins has nothing to do with this. Why does Franco Collins have nothing to do with this? Because Franco Collins is just a scribe. I'm just writing things as they are given to me to write. Call it revelation, call it vision, call it inspiration, call it prophecy, whatever you want to say. But, but, but please, that is just a job. Yeah? I don't ask or want anyone to consider that I am greater than anyone else. I'm not. I'm far from a, a moral man. I, I have tried more times than you could imagine to not do this, but I accepted some years ago, some many years ago, that ultimately there was a, a job to be done. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a job, and then it's entirely up to you. And why is it up to you? Because the message in this is that you are the author of this as much as I'm the author of this. And if you don't complete this, if you don't stand there and be competent about this, then that that is your life lesson and later on when you pass on your lesson to finally come to terms with. But this is our work, not Frank O'Collins' work. And it's an evolving process. So that's, look, I could go on and on and on about it and I don't want to because I want to keep answering questions, but 
but please don't put me on a pedestal. Don't think that I'm uh, I'm claiming anything. I'm not. Um, people have dreams. I have dreams. People um, get inspired. I get inspired. My inspiration is 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 making this come true. But I'm not the author, and I never claim to be the author of this. I mean, it should be self-evident who the author is of this, and that's the respect I'm trying to give. Okay. Yeah, no. <clears throat> definitely do. Um, and I mean, I, I press these questions because for my whole life, ever since I was a young child, I've always had a sense of something and I don't really know how to describe it. Um, yep. and I feel something right now in regard to the way that the world is. And yep. I've always been one that has been very hungry for truth and righteousness and justice. Yep. And it's, and, and I know that I have a lot of indoctrination to go through or to, to shed off the way that I was raised, the things that I was taught. And I have been going through that process, especially in the last two years. And it's just, there's a lot of information in there that it's, some of it's very staggering. Some of it sets me back and makes me wonder, well, what the heck? And yep. um, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll definitely put, um, take your words and I'll definitely peruse some more and, I just, you know, I want to, I want to understand, and I do not want to be deceived. And yeah, it's well. Here's here's the thing. What makes this unique? And I, I miss this, and I want to make this clear. I'm not asking I've you ever to believe. Like yes, yeah, sorry. Can you hear me? I, yeah, I, I can hear you. I don't, yeah, I don't want you to believe a single thing I say. I just would like you to see that these ideas help expand your mind and help you develop a competency and a balance and an amazement at what you are. And if that helps you, then that's all this is. Now, yes, it can be regarded as something more than that, but I make it clear Nowhere in the covenant does it require anyone to say believe. Yes, it makes assertions in the canons, but they're, they're claims. It doesn't. It, it's not. It's not a requirement or an act of faith in in this. This is a model, and if people use it, they use it. If they don't, they don't. If they contribute, they contribute. If they don't, they don't. Alrighty. Yep. Well, okay. I'm sure that I'll uh, I'll probably be talking to you again. And uh, All right. appreciate your time. I'll let you move on. Thank Good you, on Isaac. You. Thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, we have. Um, I wanted to get to uh, get free here. Let's see. Can get free speak? Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, I have a question that's not so philosophical, unfortunately. Um. Instead of going for another EIN number, what about going for a new uh, SS number? Uh, I missed that bit. So an EIN number and your Social Security number, I'm not quite sure. What's the question again? Well, to get an EIN number, you usually have to give your Social Security number. So yeah. I just want to uh, okay. Can, can I ask you to do this then? Have you have you read the updated section there on the ecclesiastical deed poll section on 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 get, obtaining an EIN, which has just come up this afternoon? Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah, but have you have you gone through it and looked at the the link and looked at the updated form? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I looked at it quickly. Yes, I did. Okay. When did you, what today or yesterday? Uh, today. Okay. Because. Um, if you look at the form and you look at the details there, uh, by the IRS's own details, you don't need to put an SSN number in there, okay? Okay, I guess my question is, um, is it possible to get a second SS number? Uh, right, maybe, I can, maybe I can help with that. Uh, the purpose is not to get an SSN, it's the EIN to go with the trust. The foreign trust. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a it's a question I don't I can't give you an answer to, but uh, we're not asking anyone to get a social security number. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for your question. If you go back over to university.ukd.edu, 